Hello, welcome. Um, so today, before we start uh, the video, I just, just want to show you guys something real quick. So about two weeks ago, um, I made this video on how to achieve the sort of reflection, glowy thing look on After Effects. And today, someone actually sent me something that they did uh, using JavaScript. And I think this is pretty cool that I'm going to show you guys here. So you can see the actual object is a ball that is glowing and is moving around according to my finger whenever I touch wherever on the screen that I touch the ball is gonna move there and you know I think it's pretty cool and also it, it is reflecting and casting its color onto the background as well kind of like what was what was going on uh, in my video so I think that's kind of cool and yeah that's pretty cool and shout out to uh, uh, Vishal Prajapati, um, yeah, not sure I uh, got that right, but yeah, huge shout out to you and uh, and thank you so much for sharing the JavaScript project. That, that is actually pretty cool, and I'm gonna put a link down in the description below if you guys want to check it out. Yeah, uh, big ups to you, man, if you're watching the videos, and yeah, let's get on to today's video. So on today's special episode, we're taking a look at how to take this beautiful illustration from Adobe Illustrator and put them into Adobe After Effects for animation. For uh, this episode, I just want to shout out to Bath, Bavz, B-A-V-Z on Instagram uh, for agreeing to collab with me on this animation. Uh, he's an incredible illustrator and just an overall uh, extremely nice guy, so I and mean, he does this uh, beautiful, beautiful illustrations of uh, Porsches that interests me a lot. Porsches is uh, honestly one of, if not my favorite car brand manufacturers of all time. So yeah, and he has uh, generously graced me with this beautiful illustration of uh, 911 over here, and I'm gonna go ahead and try my hands on animating that. Yeah, and we got this uh, scene over here of uh, got some mountains over there in the distance. We got some reflections over here of the waves. We got some waves over here. We got some grasses on here as well. And we got this uh, 911 in the middle. 911 is the best. A uh, little reference there. So my task today is animate uh, these waves on here. Uh, and this wave is going to crash into the beach and then re, uh, re, uh, retract themselves into the ocean again. And these over here are going gonna, are gonna to swing and gently bend, bend gradually to the wind. So the first thing that I kind of want to do is separate all of these layers. Right, so what I've done here is copy the entire thing into a different project so it's easier for me to dissect all of them. So first thing is I'm going to want to make sure that I get all the thing uh, down in my head which part of the whole illustration I need to uh, animate. Uh, mainly this uh, waves over here on the side. Uh, these waves blocks over here to the center of the uh, uh, illustration. Uh, the grasses over here, those gonna be their own separate layers. And so what I'm gonna wanna do here is create a new layer. Click on here in Illustrator. I'm gonna call this uh, waves. Uh, the farther waves, I click uh, on here to see which layer that is, and I'm gonna copy that to the uh, to this layer, and now it's gonna appear as a separate layer, and that's gonna be useful for when we import stuff into After Effects. Uh, yeah, so. I'm gonna do this for all of the layers I'm gonna want to animate and I'm gonna put a time lapse on so you know you don't have to sit through uh, the whole thing. Um, right, so after you get that all sorted out, uh, make sure you save this project. Then we can start uh, importing this uh, project file into Adobe After Effects. So every time you try to import something from uh, Illustrator for, uh, to After Effects, it always gives you like an error for, or like some of the content of the layer gets messed up, like for instance the gradients or you know the uh, blending modes or the layer styles. So make sure all of those are uh, 
all of those are okay. Uh, seems good so far. And yeah, we're gonna go ahead and jump into animating of the contents inside of this uh, illustration. Like, if you if you think you're successful and you don't have a nine Porsche 911 lying around on the beach and you got like surfboards on top of it, and you know you're not successful enough. I'm just saying. <laughs> all of these layers here, all of these layers, there are uh, vectorized layers, and so uh, there's an option to uh, turn them into After Effects uh, native shape layers. I'm gonna head over here, right click on that layer, create and create shapes from vector vector layer. As you can see, there's still some uh, there's still some masking going on uh, within the layer itself, and we're gonna take care of that. And so yeah. So now in order to solve this uh, whole masking thing now, what I'm gonna do is head over here to the contents and go into each of the group and delete the, uh, maybe the first one? No, yeah, the second path. Second path, which is the mask of the layer. You know, you can just go into, into each of these um, layers or you can go just click on this layer over here and type in path two. It's gonna, gonna drop down all the path twos inside each of these um, components, and you can highlight all of them and then I'll snap all of them. Whoop! And yeah, you got a fully realized uh, original grass layer. And I'm gonna pre-compose it and call it um, grass one comp. And for this pre-comp over here, I'm gonna try and get a little bit of organization done. I call this grass layers. I'm gonna drag this grass down to this position down here. So yeah, pretty much repeat the same process for all of the grass layers. I'm gonna do a speed work uh, of this process as well. So you know, just repeat everything that you've seen so far. Also, make sure you uh, make sure you uh, organize the layer as well so that it maintains the. Uh, uh, maintain the shape, uh, maintain the appearance that it has. I think that's, uh, I've got all the grasses composition sorted. And yeah, I'm gonna color code them a little bit to make them stand out from the uh, composition. And yeah, I think I'm gonna just delete all these uh, vector layers down here. And now we're down to the uh, exciting part of animating all of these uh, grass layers. Now I want them to be moving, not uh, in a random chaotic sort of way, but I want them to be moving a little bit, a little bit random, a little bit chaotic, but um, in the order that um, I want them to be leaning towards the uh, sort of the right side of the screen when, uh, as if there is a wind blowing from the left side uh, over. So yeah, I'm gonna be, that's gonna require a little bit of timing on, uh, some pretty good timing on that part. So, you know, I'm gonna make sure it's a loop as well. So I'm gonna drop down the work area to a, only about like 30 seconds. I think that's more than uh, what we need a lot of time, honestly, to play around with this uh, animation. Okay, so for this part, I separated out the part of the grass that contains uh, one single strand and its shadows. Uh, then I put it into its own composition and jump into that to begin animating. Uh, first, I put the anchor point at the bottom of the grass and then I animated it using the rotation settings uh, for it to uh, swing side to side. To add a little bit of randomness to the swing, I use the uh, wiggle expression at very small frequencies. Uh, I sequence the animation a bit so now the grass sort of stands still for a moment and then leans when the wind comes in. Uh, if you're wondering why this part is voiceover, then it's because animating the grass actually took a lot more experimentation than I thought it would. Uh, I tried messing with the uh, layer styles, but at the end I decided to take this uh, original vector layer to preserve some of the details that were not efficient to replicate and animate in After Effects at the same time. To make sure that the grass strand loops, I copied the rotation keyframe at the beginning and pasted it to the end. Due to the uh, wiggle expression, I had to eyeball the keyframe a little bit to make sure the grass ends up at the right position uh, as when it starts out with. 
uh, to loop the grass strand animation, I enabled the uh, time remapping in the pre-comp layer, keyframe the start and end of the layer, then use the uh, loop expression that I learned from Chris Zachary, shout out to him, uh, loop in plus loop out minus value. Uh, once I have looped the animation, the final step is to finish off this specific plant uh, grass uh, combination thing by duplicating the uh, grass strands and match it with the other strand in the original design using scale, rotation, and CC power pen. I scale down the specific strands, offset their angles, and then drag them along the timeline to offset their timings. Usually the strands that are smaller would be blown in the wind first prior to the bigger ones. And later on I added a CC bandit to even further change the way the grass strand act in the wind. When the strand reverts to the upright position, I wanted there to be little or no bend in the shape of the grass and vice versa. I think it really helps in adding a little bit of a dynamic in the way the grass moves and as we duplicate this movement further to the other grass layers, it will really help with the illusion based on where the grass is located. Now that we have finished our first group of grass, uh, the next step is simply repeating the same process for the rest of the grasses. Uh, for each of the group, I created their own grass strand and adjusted how the grass acts accordingly to the group. Uh, for instance, in this case, the bigger group is going to move more slowly with smoother rotations and the uh, smaller ones with less strands and looking like it has lesser mass will bend quicker and in a more agile fashion. And for the group of grass that are pointing the other direction, I horizontally reverse the layer and use the uh, CC bended effect to get the grass strand to go upright even further since it is heading to the right of the screen. You might think that this is a rather strenuous process and it actually is. But I honestly think that uh, all this dedication to the movement is gonna pay off in the end and it always does. Now I'm gonna pass you back to myself in the past. Um, right, so it looks like we've got all the grasses sorted out. So now we're moving on to the waves, which I hope is gonna be less complicated than animating the grasses strands because that took a while. So now I'm gonna go ahead to the uh, wave vector layer over here. I'm gonna uh, review the shape layer underneath to see what's going on. Right, so it looks like there's two separate layers, one for the uh, one for the water of the sea and one for the foam on top. Uh, looks like it's gonna be a quick job of, of uh, hand animating keyframe of the passes right here to make it look like uh, there are some waves going up and down the shores. So yeah, I'm gonna put this in to his own composition block because this entire scene is mind-blowingly heavy right now so I'm gonna put that in the Neo Wave Comp. Uh, 1014 sounds good, 1013 sounds good because that's where all the grasses strands are repeating itself as well. Okay, now we're gonna have it goes up and down the shore. So I'm, gonna I'm gonna copy the uh, Porsche, the Porsche object the car object on here for a good point of reference and then I'm gonna make sure it's the uh, it's a guide layer so that it doesn't show up uh, on the main column uh, let's jump into that real quick hey I'm back again so anyway this wave actually had more trials and error than I anticipated but it's okay since it's part of the creative process and I'm not really ashamed of it so my first attempt was not successful since the waves were uh, constantly going off the trajectory that we, it was supposed to go on and sort of breaking the illusion and there were some funky things going on inside the graph editor as well that did not help at all. Uh, I then hopped onto YouTube to find some references uh, regarding waves uh, hitting the shores and retracting themselves into the sea and what I realized that it would be better for me if I took Bob's original illustration of the waves and mapped out where each point on the path uh, they're supposed to be first. 
I worked out that if I have them follow a straight perspective line drawing from the foam to the wave, it would work better for the illusion. And so it did. Uh, having arrived at a movement that I was happy with, I offset the movement of the foam uh, and the wave to have the foam retract more slowly than the wave does and then pushed up again by the waves to make it more realistic. I then have the wave sort of overshoot at the end of the sequence for it to gain a little bit of momentum uh, before it goes back into the sea. Uh, then I loop the whole animation back. And there I have the full animation of the waves. The back waves are thankfully much more straightforward. I drew out a new shape like the ori original reflection and then reverse mask it onto another shape that contains a simple wave warp effect to simulate the uh, waves going outwards. The result looks like a mountain reflection on a wavy body of water which uh, looks really nice. And there we have it, the uh, finished product. And I understand that it's really frustrating not knowing how your animation will turn out, but with a little bit of persistence and a little bit of patience working on each of the details, then I swear it will pay off in the end when all those details come together. I'd like to thank you all for watching and hope you have enjoyed. If you guys enjoyed this video, uh, I'm out. See ya. Hey, that's my line, you loser.